Well, welcome to Noel's World of Whiskey. Yeah, our new digs, and uh, we're we're still in Campbelltown. Um, I was going to do a Springbank um, from Campbelltown, but I figured that um, Springbank is get, just getting harder to get, and it's a review that a lot of people, but they probably aren't going to look at it because. Nobody can get a spring bank. <laughs> it's, very, it's very hard to get spring bank. So, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, we're going to go after the neighbor distillery, Glen Scotia. And I just I've got three Glen Scotias here that I could review. Um, what I can say about Glen Scotia is a when I first drank, I drank a few bottles of Spring Bank when it was easier to get, and um, you know I didn't realize how it was getting more difficult to, to get, or I probably would have bought more. But anyways, I'm not in Scotland, and, and access over here in BC is not as easy. I think Alberta had a little easier access for a while. Now they're running into a problem, but I think right across this country, probably in in, in North America, we're just having trouble getting Spring Bank. But my understanding, you know, watching a a Ralphie review is that it is just getting hard to get spring bank. It's just, it gets grabbed as soon as it goes on a shelf. So, um, not very far away from spring bank. Uh, of course we have, uh, Glen Gyle, which I did a review of, and that's a short distance. And another short distance on the other side of town, we have Glen Scotia. And Glen Scotia is another oldie. Uh, 1832 it was uh, it was started now when you look at these distilleries both um, we'll say uh, back in those days I think it was just called Scotia but you look at Springbank you look at uh, Glen Scotia uh, you're you're looking at you know uh, distilleries like Hazelburn Long Row um, a lot of them of course now are have been demolished. We were very fortunate about Glen Gyle that uh, the buildings were intact and they were able to, to refurbish it. Um, Glen Scotia just kept going. 180 years, 185 years. And um, they are one of the original Campbelltown distilleries. And uh, they're also maybe a little easier to get. Now, not super easy to get, like something like a, it's like a a Glenfiddich or a McCallum or Glenlivet, but um, it is definitely easier to get than, let's say, a spring bank. So, what have I got here? <clears throat> I've got the double cask. I'm pretty sure you can still get this in the BCL, uh, certainly at the Sarath down in Victoria, probably, uh, you know, Nanaimo, uh, probably Terminal, uh, Lucky's. Uh, those are private uh, liquor stores. I'm pretty sure you can still get this here. Um, this is their double cask. It's quite popular. Uh, one a little bit harder to get is the Victoriani. Uh, this is a highly rated whiskey. And it's cask strength. I believe it's cask strength. Uh, yep, cask strength, 54.2. Uh, so it, and it's going to be the one I'm going to start with. So, um, and then, of course, I've got the 15, which is another hard one. This is a bit more like a spring bank trying to get this guy. but So we've got the 15 here. Um, I am chasing after an 18. Um, so I will do this after I do the double cast. I'll do the victory of Toriani, and then I'll do the... Uh, uh, well, we'll see what happens. I might do this first before that, or I might do the double cast and then do this. But I want to do the, the Victoriani, the one in the middle. So that's the one we are going to start with. And um, just before you know, I get into this review, I've done lots of uh, research and looked at different reviews on this guy, and that's probably why I ended up purchasing it. So, um, you know, it, it's good to look at other people's reviews. I always like to see what other people, what other reviewers, what their palettes are like, how much how close they are to, you know, what I review. And um, I'm going to say that this one here had good reviews. So what the heck, you know, I bought the bottle and I'm going to, I'm going to review it now. So anyways, 
let's get going on this. I'm going to try not drag this one on and trying to, to change my format a little bit. Um, you'll notice in my uh, videos, I, I do a lot of research and, 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 and I really enjoy it. I, 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 it's kind of like I get a chance to explore Scotland, which I will be doing in the next year with my daughters. But um, in the meantime, I'm going to do as much research on every whiskey I review because when I head over there, there's no way I'm going to be able to see every distillery. And I like to see a few castles and other things in Scotland. So I want to know which ones to see. And um, this might be an easy one because there's only three distilleries in Campbelltown. And of course they are of course, uh, Glen Scotia, the one we're doing here, which was originally called Scotia. Uh, Springbank, world famous Springbank. And the new one that, uh, well, the new oldie. The, the, reviving the old ghost distillery of Glengyle uh, and producing the uh, Kilcarran uh, malt, which I just uh, reviewed. So, anyways, um, interesting area. Oh, let's not forget, um, we have so Caden Heads, and I have a few Caden Heads, I should have remembered it. So, Caden Heads is also in Campbelltown, and evidently they do a very so good tour. I'll show you the Victoriani bottle here. There we are. So, there you are. I don't know if you can get up close. It's, I guess it's going to be harder to see the uh, the color because of the green bottle, but that is the bottle. Let's start off with the nose. This is cast strength. Non-chill filtered. <laughs> no coloring added. And we have uh, pears and we have lots of citrus. And we have some vanilla mixed with that citrus. And uh, I'm getting uh, some tropical fruits. Uh, mangoes. Maybe some pineapple here because this is starting to sweeten up a bit. Ah, it is definitely got a nose. <laughs> this has got a nose. It is a non-age statement. I am hearing that there's anywhere from 8 years to 12 years. Uh, it's a mixture of casks. So, sherry casks. There is some bourbon casks. I will give you more details uh, in the video on, on, the, on the percentages. And uh, I'm getting back into it here. Finally getting some cinnamon. And a uh, wee bit of malt in the background. If there's a whiff of smoke in here, which I, you know, I never really went after smoke in the Victoriana. Like it, did, it wasn't just something that um, I noticed, but I thought right now, I, is it a charred barrel or did I get a whiff of smoke? That's a whiff of, that's, that's either a charred barrel or a whiff of smoke. I'm going to have to check on that to see uh, if there is some peated... Um, if there is some peated uh, maltings in here. They do bring, now, we know that Springbank does their own maltings, and of course, um, that's where your, your Kill Karen comes from, is the uh, Springbank maltings. But these guys, evidently, they get their maltings from, I believe, the main, mainland of Scotland, but they get it specific to what they want, what their needs are. So it could be a peated malt, or it might be a non-peated malt. I, I'm going to have to check a little bit more detail on it when I do a little more research on this. So, But I am getting a little bit of the, I think it could be the charred barrel. Anyways, uh, beautiful nose in this. Um, let's, uh, the palate. Fifty-four point one percent. There's a reason this gets good reviews, boy. I'm not choking, I'm not coughing, I'm not finding a super alcohol burn at 54.1 or 2 or whatever it was there. It's it's incredibly smooth. The word smooth, nobody likes using it, I use it. Because that's what it is for a 54 plus percentage smooth. 
And you betcha it's got legs. I could see the legs before I even swirled it here, so. Okay, so see if I can get this up to the lens this time. Just so you can get a, no coloring. There you are. You get a chance to take a look at it Back there. The palette. Chocolate. Uh, dark chocolate. Um, orange dark chocolate. Um, hot cinnamon. <clears throat> and nutmeg. Mixed in with the, um, maybe we're going to get back into some uh, latte, cap cappuccino. Something between a cappuccino and a latte with chocolate. Um, and uh, nutmeg. With, um, oh boy, I've got, I've got some really interesting spices going on here. And I'm going to say we're finally getting a little bit of the ginger, hot ginger. And it coats your tongue. It definitely coats your tongue. To the finish. Well, this is going to be a longer finish, I can tell you, because when I was doing the finish, I was... So I did rush it. I'm, I'm, I'm getting... Uh, I'm trying to squeeze a tighter, uh, you know, a tighter video, and uh, it just seems I, um, I stretch them, so sometimes i got to force myself to the finish, so... Uh, it's got... we got a long finish. Um, we are now getting um, a little bit of wood, so I, there's got to be some age to this. Because I am definitely tasting some of the wood. Um, the uh, the spices are coming on stronger now. Um, I'm gonna say uh, with the nutmeg, we're actually getting. Um, I'm even getting a little bit of now. Now I'm getting a little bit of the uh, throat burn. But let's face it, I'm uh, it, it's the percentage. So um, uh, the hot pepper, hot pepper. Um, I'm certain when I add water, that's going to disappear. The um, my eyes are actually watering, so that's the spices, you know. Um, it's it's kind of it, 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 it's funny how finishing off here we got we have so many spices because they, they weren't as noticeable and 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 the uh, you know when I first uh, uh, you know had the palate, uh, it was kind of more the sweet and the fruit and, and um, I I got even some vanilla etc but it's spices now so that's what we're finishing off with so we're going to add a little bit of water to this let's see what happens with water okay and um i'm still i i still have the finish going off so um i'm actually uh, getting a little bit of coffee now and the spices are kind of starting to uh they're, they're fading a bit but i'm getting the coffee and um and the chocolate and a wee bit of just a wee bit of licorice so i wonder if that is the charred barrel the licorice there so i didn't add a huge amount of water so this is a 54 but i am getting uh i'm back to um my pears and my uh, my peaches, my citrus, uh, my lime, and and chocolate. Okay, palette. Yeah, it definitely sweetened it up. Lots of vanilla, vanilla fudge, and. Um, not fruity fudge, vanilla fudge. Um, chocolate in the background. And just, I, I'm actually again getting just a wee bit of licorice. So, um, again, could be the charred, charred barrels. We'll have to, we'll have to check that one out. But, um, 
You can say almost stewed fruit is what you're getting. Okay, just one one more just for the finish there. You know what? I can put a touch of water in here. There's enough there's enough percentage to this. I can put another little touch of water. I just want to see what goes on with another little touch of water. It is 54 point whatever percent, so let's just see what happens. Yeah, that really sweetened it up. So right there, what I'm getting is some deep vanilla fudge. Even some deep almond vanilla fudge. Uh, Almonds and pecan. Okay, let's try her again. Yeah, that really brought out the, the, the sweet notes and the vanilla. and the, um, we're, we're losing a little bit of what I was getting there in the licorice and that, but we're certainly gaining on it in um, the, uh, I would say, caramel, uh, caramel toffee. And uh, definitely some nuts like almonds, pecans. Um, beautiful drink. Really beautiful drink. Um, curious what the age is on this one here because it, there is some, some wood to this. So, I mean, um, could it be a mix between 8 and 12 years, maybe 14 years? I don't know. But it is a, it, it's had some very good finishing casks. And I'll get you a little more information on that once I do research it. Sometimes it's good to go into one of these without a pile of research. I know I did research this before, but I've forgotten a lot of it because I've done so many distilleries and so many whiskeys that you do kind of lose things along the way. But I do uh, think this is going to break, it's going to break the 86-ish, uh, um, it's going to be an 86, I say. Yeah, somewhere around an 86. So um, that's where I'm going to put it. Uh, it's one that uh, if you're going into Campbelltown and you can't get a spring bank, you've got to take a look at Glen Scotia. And the Victoriani, if you're looking for a cast strength, um, you know, we, I, I, I've got a few cast strengths in there. Usually most of them review well. Um, I don't kick this over the top. I want to leave room for other uh, you know, for other reviews and that. So I'm trying to be a little more conservative. I know this does get some higher reviews. Uh, you don't see too many low reviews. I don't call this a low review. I give. I think an 86 is a good score. So um, I'm recommending this. And I think it's a good one to, uh, if you want to get into Campbelltown, you want that, you know, that Campbelltown eh, close to a low land. Um, they're playing around in both uh, Springbank and Glen Scotia are experimenting a lot with their, with a lot of their bottlings now. So I know, I, anyway, uh, Springbank's getting into some triple distill, and I know that they're they're uh, the Springbank is, is is two and a half distilled. They're double and a half distilled, and I believe the Hazelburn's triple distilled. The, the Long Rose is double distilled because it's a peated. Uh, you don't usually triple distill a peated. Uh, you lose a lot of the peat, but. This one here um, is a goodie, so I'm going to finish off by uh, saying yes, this, this one I recommend, uh, 86. Uh, I'm going to ask you to drink wisely, drink intelligently, do not drink and drive, and until the next time, so much. <laughs>